What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today I'm going to be showing you my take on Augmented Dictator Games Unlimited Power Build. If you watched Augie's build, which you totally should by the way, you know that this build is really reliant on two traits, Unboard Dilithium Recrystallizer and the Best Diplomat. The way these traits work is they give you bonus damage by maxing out your non-weapon subsystems. So that's shields, engines, and auxiliary. Augie did this with a tactical character, but if there's one thing that engineers are good at, it's generating additional power, so I was really curious to see how my engineer would do with this build. After I made a few tweaks of my own, of course. You've probably already noticed my first change to this build, and that's my choice of ship, the Inquiry Battlecruiser. I named mine the Normandy because the Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out soon, and I'm really hyped for that. A rather controversial ship due to how it was released into the game, but I wanted to use this ship because it has what I think is the perfect setup for what I wanted to do with this build. I wanted a ship with a 5-3 weapons layout because I don't like doing dual beam banks on 4-4 ships. I wanted a miracle worker ship because they're kind of the best for energy weapons, and I needed something with enough science seating to support Photonic Officer. There are a few other ships in the game that fit these criteria, but none of them do quite as perfectly as the Inquiry does. Starting with the forward weapons, first I've got the Terran Task Force Phaser Beam Array. This is here for its scaling damage buff to weaken targets, and for its withering radiation proc. Normally with a build like this, I use the dual heavy cannon version of this weapon instead. However, I found I was getting slightly better results with the Beam Array. I think this is because, one, I'm not using Scatter Volley on this build because I'm not using preferential targeting, so the cannon was losing some of its power from that. And two, the best diplomat only buffs beams, so I think that's why I'm getting better performance out of the Beam Array instead of the cannon. Next are a pair of Agony Phaser Dual Beam Banks. I like these for the dot damage that they give and for their chance to disable enemy targets. Over here is the Phaser Wide Angle Dual Heavy Beam Bank. I really need a shorter name. This is a hard hitting weapon from the Discovery Reputation and is largely here for its set bonuses. Paired with the Dark Matter Torpedo and Lorca's Custom Fire Controls, you unlock the Lorca's Ambition set. This gives you a nice stacking crit severity buff and a passive ability that launches an additional Dark Matter Torpedo at enemies with below 50% health. In the final forward slot, we've got the aforementioned Dark Matter Torpedo, a powerful projectile weapon with an extra bit of dot damage thanks to its Dark Matter Disillusion proc, and like I said earlier, it's here for its really nice set bonus. Down here, we have the usual suspects for energy weapon builds, the Colony Deflector for its buffs to crit chance and crit severity, which is unique for a deflector, the Competitive Reputation Engine for its speed buffs, a Deuterium Stabilized Warp Core for its reduced weapons power cost, though non-engineers might want to go for the Terran Task Force Warp Core for its buff to max power levels, and the Discovery Reputation Shield for the additional damage to enemy shields it gives. In the back, first we have the Trilithium Enhanced Omni Phaser for its buff to weapons haste. Beam Overload cuts your firing rate in half, so buffing your haste is a good way to get some of that fire rate back. Next is an omnidirectional version of an Agony Phaser Beam. And finally, the Kinetic Cutting Beam. Normally I'd put the Trilithium turret in the back for an extra chance at a haste buff, but using the Cutting Beam along with the Assimilated module gives me access to its two-piece, Omega Weapon Amplification. This gives me a small chance to significantly reduce the power cost of all my weapons for a short duration. In the device slots, I've got pretty standard stuff for an energy weapon build. Energy amplifiers for the bonus damage to my energy weapons. Deuterium surplus for the speed buff. Reactive armor catalyst, just in case I need a small heal. And Kobayashi Maru for the random buffs. I thought about using red matter capacitor here for its buff to all power levels, but I decided against it due to its long cooldown, which is 3 minutes, meaning I'd only get to use it once in an ISE. Though it's still a good option if you don't have the Kobayashi Maru transponder. This is a Miracle Worker ship that I have upgraded to Tier 6X, so we've got two Universal Console slots. The first is Lorca's Custom Fire Controls for its impressive buff to crit chance, weapons power setting, and shield penetration, plus it's the third piece in the Lorca's Ambition set, which I've already gone over. And the other Universal slot is the Fakiri Torment Engine. This is here for its buff to non-hazard damage over time. That includes the dot you get from the Agony Phaser proc and from Entropic Rider. Next is the Assimilated Module, which is here for its buffs to crit chance, crit severity, and your weapons power setting. It's also here for its two-piece bonus with the Kinetic Cutting Beam, which I went over earlier. The Dynamic Power Redistributor Module, aka the DPRM. I'm sure you know why this is here, but I'll go over it anyway. Its passive buffs to damage resistance and directed energy damage are nice, but the main reason to use this is for its click. Its massive buffs to bonus damage and hull regen are what make this the best console in the game. Point Defense Bombardment Warhead also has some nice passives on it. Its buff to projectile damage is helping out my Dark Matter Torpedo, and it has a small buff to crit chance, which is nice because as a Federation Engineer, I am always desperate for additional crit chance. Its click is basically a giant torpedo that launches a bunch of little torpedoes until the big one explodes, which altogether does a decent amount of DPS. Even more so if you have Chemocyte Lace Weaponry active at the time, because those little torpedoes will trigger Chemocyte like crazy. Additionally, the Bombardment Warhead has a set bonus with the DPRM that gives me some extra 
to phaser damage. Next is the Domino. Its passive bonuses to phaser damage and accuracy aren't bad, but the main reason to use this, like the DPRM, is for the click. Its buff to firing cycle haste and bonus damage make this a really powerful console for a beam overload build. The click on weaponized helical torsion is pretty mediocre, but it's worth keeping for its passive bonuses. The phaser damage buff is nice because this is a phaser build, and the crit severity bonus is even nicer because, as a Federation engineer, that's another stat I'm always pretty desperate for. Down here are the two standard low buy consoles for DPS builds. Bioneural Infusion Circuits has the best crit severity buff of any console in the game, and its buff to hull capacity and control expertise are feeding into two traits that I'm using. Tachyo Kinetic Converter has some more crit chance and crit severity, which, like I said, as an engineer, I'm always desperate for. It also buffs your turn rate, which is nice because battlecruisers aren't always the most nimble ships. Finally, down in the tactical console slots, just a bunch of vulnerability locators for their phaser damage and crit chance. My skill tree has not changed, it's still the one I've been using. Feel free to pause here to get a better look at it. For my specializations, I'm using Intel as my primary because it gives me access to space flanking, which gives me bonus damage when hitting an enemy on its rear arc. This is why positioning is such an important thing for your DPS. For the secondary, I'm using Temporal Operative because it gives me Entropic Rider. This applies a physical damage over time effect to my enemies whenever I fire an energy weapon or a projectile weapon. This effect is also being buffed by the Fakiri Torment engine. In the personal space traits is pretty standard stuff for energy weapon builds. Adaptive Offense, which is a crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and then back. Context is for Kings, gives a bonus damage buff every time you're not being shot at, so if you're flying with a tank, that shouldn't be a problem. Inspirational Leader gives you a chance to buff nearly all of your starship skills every time you activate a Bridge Officer ability. This is a really nice all-purpose trait that's good for virtually any build. Fleet Coordinator gives you 2% bonus damage for every person on your team, including yourself, so that's easy bonus damage. Innocuous for the little bit of crit severity and the reduction in threat generation. Intel Agent Attaché reduces the cooldowns of my captain's abilities every time my ship scores a critical hit. Your captain's abilities can be very powerful, so reducing their cooldown means you get to use them more often. Fragment of AI Tech buffs your energy weapon damage based off of your control expertise. I'm not getting it quite to maximum on this build, but even as it is, it's not a bad buff for a personal trait. Unconventional Systems reduces the cooldown time of your Universal Consoles every time you use a Control Bridge Officer ability, like Tractor Beam. I'm using this to shave a couple seconds off of DPRM and Domino. Superior Beam Training gives me a small bonus damage buff to all my beam weapons, which makes sense because it is a beam overload build. And Terran Targeting Systems for its crit severity buff. In the Starship traits, first we have Emergency Weapons Cycle for its haste buff and its reduction to weapons power cost. This has been considered a must-have for any energy weapon build for a long time now. Super Weapon Ingenuity to extend the duration of Beam Overload by 5 seconds. With all my reduced cooldowns, this means I should be able to keep Beam Overload up nearly 100% of the time, assuming it doesn't misfire. Terran Goodbye for its stacking buff to Critical Chance and Accuracy Rating. 5% Crit Chance stacked 3 times, that's a lot of Crit Chance for just one trait. And remember what I said about engineers being desperate for Crit Chance. Now this is where we get to what makes this build unique. Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer gives you 10% bonus damage every time you activate an engineering ability for every non-weapons power subsystem you have maxed out. That's a potential of 30% bonus damage. And the Best Diplomat, which does pretty much the same thing except it's only triggered off of Beam Fire at Will and Beam Overload, and it only affects your beam weapons. Both of these traits are reliant on maxing out your power levels, and since engineers have EPS power transfer, they're well suited for getting as much bonus damage as possible out of these traits. Because this build is reliant on maxing out my power levels, I need my auxiliary power where it is, so that means no ox to bat. Therefore, I'm using Improved Photonic Officer for my Bridge Officer cooldowns. In the Space Reputation traits, first I'm using Advanced Targeting Systems for the Crit Severity buff, Tyler's Duality for the Crit Chance based off of my Hull Capacity, Precision for more Crit Chance, Magnified Firepower for the bonus damage to my weapons, and Controlled Countermeasures for more bonus damage to my weapons against controlled targets. In the Bridge Officer seating, first we have Distributed Targeting. This is nice on a single target build like this to distribute a little bit of extra damage to surrounding smaller enemies. Attack Pattern Beta for its damage resistance debuff. Override Subsystem Safeties 3. This gives me a plus 50 to my power levels that gradually diminishes over the course of 20 seconds. This is another reason why I wanted to use the Inquiry for this build. This Intel seat lets me use OSS, which gives me additional help for my power levels. The downside is that OSS randomly kills one of your subsystem powers for 5 seconds once it's done. Fortunately, you can fix that by hitting Engineering Team, which I have right here. Down here is Chemosite Lace Weaponry 1 for its extra radiation damage and its damage resistance debuff. Torpedo Spread 2 to give my Dark Matter Torpedo a little extra punch. 
and Beam Overload 3, because, you know, it's a Beam Overload build. Over here is Let It Go 1 for its damage res debuff. Emergency Power to Weapons 2 is mostly just here to trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle because its abilities are really outshadowed by Narrow Sensor Bands 3, which gives your energy weapon damage a significant bonus damage buff based on your distance to your target. This ability is the main reason why I like Miracle Worker seeding for energy weapon builds so much. Mixed Armament Synergy 3, another reason why I like Miracle Worker so much. Activating a beam, cannon, mine, or torpedo will buff the other three damage types by 50% bonus damage, meaning just firing my beams buffs my torpedo, and vice versa. Down here is Tractor Beam 1, which is really just here to trigger unconventional systems and controlled countermeasures, and Photonic Officer 1 to improve the cooldowns of my other buff abilities. In the Duty Officers, first we have 24 of 47. Every time I activate a tactical ability, I have a chance to max out my power levels for 5 seconds, and every Miracle Worker ability gives me a chance to increase my crit chance. 19 of 47 is very similar to the previous doff. This one gives me a chance for maximum power levels for 5 seconds every time I activate an Engineer ability, and Miracle Worker abilities have a chance to increase my armor penetration. These two are here for a little bit more help with my power levels, because obviously I can't keep EPS Power Transfer or OSS 3 up 100% of the time. Down here are a pair of Projectile Weapons Officers, one that gives me a stacking crit severity buff, and one for a similar crit chance buff. I used to only have rare versions of these DOFs. These two were recently gifted to me by Augmented Dictator Games, so now I've got a little bit better chance of those buffs triggering. Thanks again, Augie. Next is an Energy Weapon Officer that gives me a chance for some extra shield pen every time I use Beam Overload. And since I can only fit Photonic Officer 1 on this ship, I'm using 39 of 47 for a little bit of extra help with my Bridge Officer cooldowns. Now I want to talk about one more thing before we get to the ISE run. Enhanced Plasma Manifold. It's the console that comes with the Tier 1 Oberth. It buffs all your non-weapon subsystems. Augie was using this console on his version of the build because he kind of had to. There aren't many ways for a tactical character to buff those subsystems that high. But my reaction to that was, I don't need that console. I'm an engineer. I have EPS power transfer. I can make all the power I want. But as I've been recording this, I've been wondering if not including Enhanced Plasma Manifold was a mistake. Even with EPS Power Transfer, and OSS, and those two liberated Borg Duty Officers, I can't keep my power levels maxed out 100% of the time. So while this build did perform very well, you'll see that in the ISC, I can't help but wonder if it would have done a bit better with that Tier 1 Oberth console. I'll have to do some further testing, but until then, stay tuned for the ISC for the build as you've seen it, and then the parse. Hundred and sixty-nine k on a Federation engineer using a beam overload build. 
I was pretty impressed by that. Especially since, honestly, I feel like I could have done better in that ISE. My piloting wasn't great, and there was a little bit of a lag spike in there too. But yeah, I'm, I'm honestly really impressed with this. This makes me wonder just how high I could get with a proper 3-2 split ISE. Over here, you can see that the Terran Task Force Phaser Beam Array actually did better than the Dual Heavy Beam Bank. This surprised me. The Terran Task Force Phaser is a powerful weapon, but it's still a phaser array. I would have expected a Dual Beam Bank, especially one as powerful as the Discovery Reputation Dual Beam Bank, to do more damage. Just goes to show you how powerful those Terran Task Force weapons are. The Kinetic Cutting Beam surprised me too. 28k isn't bad for a weapon that isn't affected by any firing modes. This is likely a result of all the reduced weapons power cost I put into this build. There we have it. Unlimited power on an engineer. DPSing on an engineer is always a little bit more of a challenge than it is on the tactical, so I hope this helps out any of my fellow engineer players who are looking to put together a beam overload build. Big thanks to my top hatless counterpart MC Stu for hosting this ISC during his YouTube livestream. My name is also Stu, and this is a friendly reminder that we are the Stu Collective, and resistance is Stu Tile. <laughs> Such a bad joke. <laughs>